Hello. Now, uh, in a previous video, I made a view of kind of like a three-fourth view of the Echinumonid wasp. Probably saying that wrong. Uh, this photo was by uh, James Rebin. Um, so I did a different view. And the interesting thing is like in this view, you could really see like the, uh, what I like to call insect armor of our wasp here. So, as always, I'm going to start with a uh, gesture. And when I say that, either using a straight line, C curve, S curve, an ellipse, or some shape. Preferably a simple shape, like a bean or something like that. I'm going to start with the uh, head. Or like just like a ball to kind of summarize the head. Oops. Sorry. Okay. Oops. I think that's a bit too large. Maybe I should have made the wasp a little bit larger but I think that's the same I don't want to make it too large that's a bit too large I'll stick with this I kind of like that hmm. you know what I'm gonna make it a little smaller the reason is because uh, I'm gonna be adding more shapes onto this later when I go to the uh, structure step. So now I'm going to draw the thorax, which is like right here. And it's pretty close to the head. I don't, I don't think I made it close enough. I should have made it a little bit closer. Yeah, I think that's about right. Because it kind of like, there's like a bit of a neck that connects like that and that. And then, um, thinking about how it goes around the forms. Well, it's kind of like that. Well, you know, I don't need to do it for this one. Um, but I do see that, like, here, or more like here, we have another, like, connecting joint thing that kind of makes me think of a mud dauber wasp just based on its shape. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'm thinking of that wrong. Now I'm going to draw it kind of an elongated ellipse. And now that I'm looking at it again, I think I should have made it a little bit higher and thinner. A little bit too close. And I'm trying to ghost my lines as well, whatever I draw. I'm trying to get in some practice. I'm trying to cut down on the uh, control Z. And I think that summarizes it in a good way um okay so the interesting thing here is we could see where the legs are connected um which is connected to the uh, thorax and where well kind of right here it, they're still on the underside and based on the wasp view we still can't see all of the underside we can see some of it a little bit but i'll show you I think I'm making the leg entry points a bit too large. Kind of like that. Kind of like that. And we can't, you know, because it's a side view, we can only see, like, one side. I mean, it's not like a exact side profile view, but it's showing, it's kind of, <laughs> if you think of it, it's like a portion of a side view. 
because we could still kind of see the other legs, like just a very, very small part of them, not all of them. But the connecting points would just be like across on the other side, even though it's not visible. So I'm just going to draw through it a little bit. Kind of like that. Um, the other thing, I don't want to go in the structure yet, but now that I'm looking at it, I kind of want to tack on another ball. Uh, the reason why I want to tack on a ball is because the more I look at the uh, thorax, it kind of looks like a bit of a bean shape, but I think maybe I should hop to the structure layer because like if you look at our wasp here it's a thorax it's a bit more like bean shaped so it kind of like goes up a little bit kind of goes that and kind of connects around well I think I made it too large but a bit like that and it kind of like there's like this portion that kind of goes over this ball-like thing where the wings are connected to because if you look right here in the image I'm seeing like a, a wing connection point and we can't see it on the other side because of the uh, the view but it's still there so I am gonna draw another uh, whole thing now this wasp has its uh, wings down so you know, both of its wings are kind of laying on top of each other uh, over its uh, thorax and abdomen, so it's a bit obscured. We can kind of see it, and I really do see that uh, gestural flow to it, but I think I'm going to draw that a little bit later, and I will draw that on the gesture layer. But I wanted to go, uh, I think I want to still stay on the uh, structure layer, because I wanted to add some additional forms to the head. Like, I guess it would be the mandibles, but if you see it right here, it's kind of like this uh, triangle thing. It kind of like goes down and then kind of goes up. And it's a form that wraps around our, uh, our form. So it's connected to that head. And it's very interesting because I'm seeing that as well. I'm not really sure what that is. Not sure if it's like a proboscis of any type, but there's got to be a connection point for it. And it just kind of like goes out and kind of goes like that. I may have made it a bit too long. I'm going to do that one more time. I think about like that. And then I'm seeing that thing there, which I tried to draw, but I'm going to emphasize it a little more. I'm guessing it's a biter or mandibles. Um, here I'm seeing like the shape that's a bit like a triangle kind of popping out then going back on the head where the antenna are. So there's got to be a connection point for that antenna. And I'm just going to draw a line that kind of goes uh, like that. I'm actually going to make it a little bit further out for the antenna. And uh, you know they're a bit close so it's kind of like that and that. Let me do that one more time. And I think kind of like that. Perhaps I made it a bit too far, so let me do it again. I still made it too far again. Eh, I think it's close enough with that. So now I should have added those on the gesture layer, but oh well. Um, now I'm going to draw the eyes, which the eyes are interesting because I'm kind of seeing it like a bit of a bean shape. I mean, I know it's just a perspective issue, but it's connected to that head. And, you know, its head is like, a, it looks a bit like triangular shaped, even though like based on our perspective, we're kind of not seeing all of that. Like I'm seeing kind of a line that kind of like bulges out here before wrapping back in. Um, let me do that again. Kind of like bulges out before it comes back in. And its uh, eye is kind of, 
it, it takes up a majority of the head. It's kind of like that. And we can kind of see the other eye, even though it's a bit obscured. Or let me do that again. And it kind of sticks out a bit like that. And now that I look at it, there should be a bit of a separation between it. So I kind of made it too close. And it's a bit more like that. Here, let me do that one more time because I think it's a bit... You know what? I think that's actually good. The other thing here is it's kind of like there's a bit more of a connection socket with the head in which it's kind of like that. I'm seeing like a very subtle little dip thing before you get to the eye here, kind of like a bump. I'm pretty sure it's just a perspective thing. So now I want to focus on the uh, antenna. So the antenna uh, I tried to draw that triangular nub that kind of connects it initially, and it seems like both the antenna, like the first connection part, is like that ellipse. They're like very small ellipses. Let me try that again in a better perspective. Let me do one on the other side as well. And it's interesting here, it's like there's a little inset before the antenna balls continue. And it's a bit hard to see. I mean, I probably could count all of them. I'm just going to kind of go with it because the last time I tried to count each individual one, I either overestimated or underestimated it. And I think as long as I try to space it out properly, I could have more success drawing it. The other thing is I want to cap off the end of the antenna. And yeah, there, there are all these little balls, although it looks like it kind of gets a bit, like it kind of like rounds off near the end and maybe like at a midway point, that's when the balls like kind of become a bit more blurred. So maybe like, that's too big. Maybe like at that point. Then then I'm going to try to draw the small balls that go along the uh, antenna. And they're all connected. They're all kind of like laying in one another, kind of like a stack of cups. Alrighty. Now I want to jump around to the uh, abdomen. So something I kind of missed, or I did add it back in the last uh, Echinuminod wasp that I drew. Uh, there's that insect armor, and it's really interesting because you could see like they're like distinct portions, kind of like stacking cups again. I keep thinking of it like that. So I want to uh, I want to draw those, and it's a bit like the first one is a bit kind of at the halfway point. And they're all kind of like going out a little bit then coming back in. I think I made that a bit too large. But it's kind of like the next layer is a little bit thinner than the previous.
four, five, six, seven. It really thins out near the end. Now, like the last part is the uh, stinger. Which is a bit thinner. I think I'm gonna, I don't like to cut in to my construction, but I kind of cut in a little bit, um, which I think is a bit of a problem, <laughs> a bit of a problem. I don't like to do subtractive construction, which is kind of what I did with that little end piece, but I'm gonna roll with it. <laughs> um, so now I want to start, I want to draw that thing. It's very matchstick-like. It kind of like, it's like thick at the start, then it tapers off near the end. So I kind of wanted to start near the end with the, thick, the thinness and kind of work my way up. It's very thin. It's very subtle. Um, now I want to work with, I want to work with the, okay. So I want to take a look at the body again. I'm kind of seeing this under area and this part here, it's kind of like, it kind of goes and connects to that wing ball. I'm just seeing that connection and wraps around that wing ball. And it's very interesting because like, even though I drew these uh, pilot holes that we're going to be using for our legs, they're, they're not visible in this image. There's kind of like, an, like a bit of a hangover. It's a bit like square. Where it comes and wraps around the ball of our wasp. It's kind of just like a structure of the uh, wasp itself. But yeah, but now I want to start drawing the legs. Um, the interesting thing here is if you look near its head, if you're looking in the image over here, uh, just so I have your attention, if you look here, it's really obscured. We can't see the front left leg. It's kind of just like, it's just obscured in the image. I'm just going to draw that for it. But we can see a good deal of the front leg, which kind of starts off with like a nub and connects to that ball. And then it's interesting as it's a very bean-like shape. So we have that uh, bean-like shape that just goes to the head. Actually, that ball should have extended a little bit further down. So the first shape kind of like is a bean. And then what connects to that is a thinner like teardrop shape. And they all like connect. Then we have like a very thin, oh, I should have drawn the gesture for those legs. I can't believe I forgot that. So I'm gonna hop to the gesture layer real quick again. And whenever I do these, I try to establish a little bit of a gesture layer for them. And I just did that real quick. I'm gonna do that for the rest of the legs. I don't think I made that thin enough. Think about that. And I'm always trying to make these uh, small comparisons to the wasp body. And when you do this, I feel like you'll always make a mistake here and there, but you have to roll with it sometimes. Because I'm kind of seeing the leg goes up around like the second section. And it's also like extending past the uh, stinger a little bit. On the back leg, it's interesting. You can see kind of it under between the area between the thorax and the abdomen. It's just very subtle. So if I was to draw through my form, it would kind of be like, actually it should be going up, up, then it gets obscured. You can kind of see a little bit of the end portion of that leg. Um, 
Yeah, <laughs> it's very hard to see that back leg. And it's interesting because I think, no, no, I kept it like that. So yeah, I'll get back to that, <laughs> back to that back leg soon. But I wanted to go back to this leg right here. Um, I'm sorry, I meant the front right leg. So then you have this uh, very small matched stick like shape. It connects like that. Then I'm seeing like the the same thing I saw last time. It's like three little triangles. Then a fourth longer one that kind of curves a bit. Then I'm seeing like uh, two little two little claws, which I'm pretty sure used for the wasp to like climb stuff, like probably trees, plants, and probably grasping other insects. I would not be surprised um if it's for that as well probably uh i would not bugle this insect attacking other insects unless like it, it i wasps are very i don't know I, I know they serve a purpose but i don't like seeing that purpose on caterpillars um <laughs> but i'm gonna start with the middle right leg now which is interesting because it kind of hooks around and kind of loops back around then it has that strong shape that connects to that i'm also seeing that little i'm not sure what it is if it's like an extra uh, grasper it's like a little needle type thing i mean i know it's not a needle but it's just like a way it can grip stuff it's on both sides i see like a big one right here and like a smaller one next to it and then we have that little match stick like thing. Then we have like the three triangles and the then the last one. So like one, two, three. And the last one is a little bit larger. And then it has like the graspers. Okay, so now I wanna do the hard to see middle leg right here even though it's extremely difficult to see. Um, and, you know, I don't want to draw stuff, everything that we're not seeing, but you do have like something there and it's gonna connect to the end of it. Um, so we got that, got that. Then we have like the last part, which it's just very obscured. So I'm not gonna be able to draw it as much as I want to. Like this is pretty much all wrong. and. It's just because it's blurred. I was kind of debating whether I should even draw it or not because of how obscured it is and whether it's beneficial for me to show you it. Um, if you're wondering why this appears, it's just because I like to save my work <laughs> often. Um, yeah, it doesn't auto do that. I mean, it's still a really good paint program, but I know I'm going on a tangent with that. So I'm gonna do the back leg here. Um, I'm gonna try to draw what I can see with it, kind of like that. It gets really thin based on the perspective. And it connects, connects. I see a little bit of that, uh, it's whatever that is right there. It's just sticking out a little bit. And I know there's, it's gonna be, it's gonna have that triangle thing just very obscured. And sometimes you get that when you take uh, photos. It's just something that happens. I mean, I, I would say don't always worry about that and work on what you can with the given uh, reference that you have, or you can always look at um, other views of the reference. So now I want to focus on the back right leg. Um, so I see this big initial shape. It's very interesting. It's kind of like a bead. It's a lot more round. Then there's a small shape here, which is also very interesting. Cause like, I wanna say I couldn't see it on a lot of the other legs. 
Then we have like that big bean shape here. It's pretty much going to the second ribbing. Probably should have angled it up a little more. Hmm. Let me do it one more time. Two more times. Kind of like that. Then we have this shape right here, which goes one, two, three, about to the third, one, two, three. What's interesting is it kind of looks a bit uh, flat in this area and I know it's just a perspective thing kind of like how the ribbing on the uh, abdomen looked a bit flat and it connects to that and it connects to that then we have the uh, matched stick thing that pretty much goes out, like it's just just before the stinger then we have uh the three oh actually these look a bit longer like that one looks a bit longer initially than the other ones. So we have one, two, three. Then um, I realized, I think I made a, bit, a little bit of a mistake I made with the gesture here. I made it kind of go down when it really should be going up a bit. So luckily I can decide to fix that. And it does cap off near the end. Kind of like that. And I am seeing this small two little claws. Okay, so we drew a lot of this wasp. Now there's one thing I was forgetting, which are the wings. And I'm going to adhere to the wing layer right here. And I do see like an additional structure kind of like that wraps around the wing here and connects to the ball, kind of goes along the surface of the form, even though it seems a bit difficult to see, but it's definitely there. It's definitely wrapping along that uh, extra ball-like surface. Although that's, that's what I'm seeing. Um, so the wing, one, two, three, it covers pretty much everything but the last three. Um, so the wing is just very gestural. And the, the illusion that I'm kind of getting here is like the first wing, you know, it covers it. Um, I think I should have made it dip down more. I think I, I made a mistake with that. So let me do that again. So it kind of covers like that and kind of covers like that. And the, the other wing on the other side kind of just flows and it's a bit obscured because we can't see that connection, but it's definitely there on the other side. And it kind of gives the illusion of if it's one, but I, there's definitely a clear uh, separation between the two wings as they uh, lay on one another. If you look right here, so I think that is about as far as I want to go with this wasp. If I had some critiques of my own, it would be that I didn't make the abdomen longer. I think it should have been longer, and I think I made it a bit too uh, stubby compared to the shape of what I like to call like mud daubers. Um, they're another wasp, and it, they always seem to like kind of look like this. Like I know not every wasp you look at will look like that. But they have these subtle nuances. Although I could be dead wrong because I'm not an entomologist. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thank you very much for sticking with me throughout this video. Um, I'll try to draw more 
of these in the future. I definitely plan to. If you like my channel, please subscribe to my channel. If you like the video, please like the video. If you have a question, uh, please leave it in the comments. Or you could email me, whatever makes you feel most comfortable. But yeah, thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. Bye.